Thank you so much, Mr. Ka, for this excellent presentation, because Senegal is definitely it is a very interesting uh, story, and uh, this experience can give us hope. The uh, examples uh, in which we get from Africa, we don't get that many successful examples. We always talk about Latin America, and uh, when we try to find a country in Africa uh, that has a success story to report, it's very, very difficult to find it. It's also very good that you stop with uh, the with the slide on the sun movement. Last year, I don't know if you remember, but last uh, year we had David Nemero here uh, who made a presentation on the principles of uh, the sun principles, the sun movement. And uh, the presentation of Mr. Carr was one example of uh, the of the translation into practice of this movement sun, a context with lots of challenges, and so it was very reassuring to uh, see that this famous um, or movement uh, or spirit um, that this uh, movement uh, actually works before we discuss and publish openly about this sun movement. I think that we can learn a lot from uh, Senegal. We do not have that much time for questions and answers, so uh, I will give you the possibility to um, make comments. I have one question. I would like to know whether Senegal has plans to help or uh, to share more openly uh, with the countries in the region uh, their experience uh, so that they will have an impact on uh, the other countries that surround them and uh, that have even more problems. Since you are in an, 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 in an advanced uh, situation, do you think that you are able to share your experiences with your neighboring countries? So we are going uh, to take some questions in French to facilitate the job of the interpreters and then we proceed. Uh, the interpreter cannot hear. Okay. Agnes uh, Guion of uh, the Project Spring, thank you so much for the excellent presentation. I am impressed uh, by the success Senegal has to show. And I am also impressed uh, when you talk about the mobilization of the different uh, ministries. We have lots of difficulties uh, to get the other ministries involved. And I wonder whether the budget uh, earmarked uh, to nutrition is also is available to the other ministries. How do you do it to mobilize them? Is it in giving them money or is it in um, imposing regu regulations? Is there another question in the room? Uh, thank you for this uh, great presentation. I have a question regards the adaptation of the interventions on the local level. Um, like you said, the local authorities uh, who decide. I'm wondering how is this working uh, with regards to the different interventions? Is there a list of interventions or is there a minimum uh, which needs to be affected for these programs? How does this work? Um, so now we continue with English. Marcus Lips uh, visiting I am not sure if I understood completely. Uh, you say that you have no. um, these are uh, these international organizations which are financed by states, by other uh, people who give the money. I have not really understood what the financing purpose is, how that works. Marsha, John. It's allowed. It's allowed. <laughs> Terrific presentation, and I enjoyed listening to engagement of all of the different sectors and levels of government, um, down to you know local engagement. But I also know that achieving the kind of things that you've achieved in Senegal involves really reaching households and engaging families. And I'm just wondering if you could spend 
a minute talking about what you are doing about really engaging families and what this kind of movement means at the family, at the civil, general civil society level. <clears throat> uh, John? Mm -hmm. um, yes, thank you. Um, my question is about the kind of food systems in Senegal and what is the change from 20 years ago and now in terms of what foods get delivered to people? Um, fortified foods, biofortified foods, supplements, what, whatever. But how would you describe it 20 years ago, and how would you describe it today? Um, maybe we'll. On va vous demander de répondre, Monsieur K, et puis on verra si on a une autre. Answer these questions, and then we are going to take another round, Mr. K. Thank you for these different questions. With regards to the first question, which has to do with exchanging the ideas with our neighboring countries, we are very open to this. And we would like to share, together with the World Bank, a, a process. And we have already a South South uh, program in place for the different projects, for the different nutrition programs. Uh, so uh, we work together with Ghana in order to exchange our experiences. With regards to the CLM, if you have countries that are interested, they can come to us, and we are totally open to help them out. And uh, we are really very glad to help out. Now, with regards to the mobilization of the other ministries, it's a very important question. Uh, we had to go through different phases. In 2002, but before 2000, in fact, we had an NGO that implemented the project. And then in 2001, the ministries entered the game. In the beginning, uh, we had a technical executive ladder. Um, this was done together with the Minister of Education, Minister of Health. The CLM the CLM gave financing for the implementation of the activities. So that means first we had the strategic plans put together by the ministries. And then we support the implementation of the activities. It is within the ministries. It is under the direction nutrition uh, where uh, these strategies are developed. So it is difficult right now uh, to do this, but this is how it works. Uh, now, for the future, we would like uh, to reinforce the capacities within the ministries so that nutrition becomes a priority and so that all of these departments, the direction, that they will be strengthened in order to help us meet the needs. So that is our plan. Now, adaptation at the local level. What we have as a minimum, yes, a minimum is required. The minimum is linked to the objective, to the goal. Uh, we were talking about the results. We have an approach based on results. The management is really based on, on the results. And uh, the objectives are very precise. Uh, for example, uh, prevalence of malnutrition needs to uh, be reduced of X percent in that zone and in that in that zone. Uh, also, uh, the um, uh, the help you give to mothers bearing children, for example, needs to be increased of that in that amount. Uh, there is there are conditions uh, linked to it, and our uh, proposals are. Need, need to be defined so that they will meet the objectives. We have an approach which is called the grandmother approach. It is the community, the community which helps. The members of the community help each others. And this is where we ask of the people in the households, for example, to help each other, because you cannot have on an international uh, level a structure which uh, takes into account all of these little details. So we work on the community level. 
and this the adapt th this is how we do the adaptation uh, we look what is needed in what zone and then th the programs need to be adapted the competition between the ONGs the, the NGOs uh, now, when they express their interest, then we define the different zones where an NGO can write an application for. And now, uh, whether it is a national NGO or an international NGO or a grassroots group, everybody uh, has the freedom to apply for the position. So, because we ha we work together with local and international NGOs, for international uh, NGOs, those are um, NGOs who have already an established platform. They work already in the region. Um, then, if we have an NGO which already develops activities um, on the level of the zone, they work. They will work together with the others who apply for positions within the zone on the local level. Uh, the selection is done by the people in charge of uh, the, the zone because those are the ones who are going to do the follow-up, the monitoring, the evaluation of the work of the NGO. It's the governor of the region, the local o authorities who work together with uh, the governor. That commission uh, will make sure uh, that, uh, the ON th that the NGO is followed and is evaluated with regards to the engagement of the families. Very important. And this also has to do with your uh, question uh, with the different zones. If for different for different zones, we have different structures. Uh, there are some who use uh, the um, grandmother approach, others uh, the head of family. But that what is interesting is that the, the more and more we work together with families, the energy which is channeled, which is needed for nutrition, um, is channeled better. Nutrition is channeled on every level of the community. It's not only the mother's job; it is the grandmother's, the father's, the head of the head of the head of state uh, or uh, the mm, the religious leaders the marabouts everybody is involved now in nutrition now um, fa the families are a key element and the strategies in order to mobilize this element uh, use different strategies uh, with regards to food in senegal if we are for example, talk, uh, talking about enriched f food, uh, you're talking about salt. It was with UNICEF where we worked together for 10 years in order to enrich or to reinforce the capacities uh, of the groups who help distribute salt and also enrichment of flour. So it is really salt it's oil, mineral oils, flour, those are uh, the main staples and they need to be enriched. And so we work together with our partners on that. One or two uh, small questions. This question is from Carolyn. She's with the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition in Geneva. And she writes, Mr. Kahn mentioned that one of the key areas for the CLM is its focus on innovation. Can Mr. Kahn explain what are CLM's plans in this area? Well, I would like to thank Caroline for this question. Uh, thank you and hello, Caroline, because uh, you uh, sent an email to me and you promised me to follow the presentation. Well, we have to look at this through different angles. Innovation, it has to do with the multi-sectoral activity. We know that we need to be creative, innovative. If we would like to have an, an efficient policy in Senegal, it is not really official. It's not in a document, 
but we are in, in a phase of brainstorming to reinforce the multi-sectoral approach. How are we doing it uh, to involve the health ministers so that they see this as a priority? Well, this is, this is a, a question, this is a reflection. We don't have the response yet. Um, innovation also has to do with the capacities, capacity building. We are aware that if we want to talk about sustainability and if the use of real capacities on a local level, we need to work together with the local authorities. Today, we have a reality. We have some capacities, we have to implement them. We have to innovate on how we are doing it, how do we implement the resources, how can we transfer uh, within a zone with the help of the local authorities our resources so that these become, so that these capacities are used in the right way. In fact, I response identification capacities, implementation capacities. Those are elements, those are elements we are working on, innovating elements uh, for the fight against lacks in nutrition. We need to work together with our partners and the different sectors so that we can, so that we can tackle every segment of the population and so that we uh, can adapt uh, the different uh, staples of food uh, that they that, that that the food uh, is directly employed in the zones where it is um, where it becomes a necessity we also have to modernize our structure we need to reinforce our structure because very often in Senegal, in um, development areas, we have some success stories, but then they disappear because they are over. And we need to have something which is durable, which is sustainable, and which stays durable. So when we are doing modernizations or innov innovations on any uh, kind of level, we have to make sure that these innovations can remain durable. I'm sorry, if you allow me, I would like to say hello to Mr. Jakob. Uh, he promised to come and he just arrived from Dhaka. He promised me uh, from Dhaka that he would come today and he is here, he arrived. Uh, I imagine that he came directly from the airport to the conference and uh, we were talking about leadership. Well, he is one of those leaders Le and he, he is definitely one of the people who work together with us. Thank you so much for coming. Now I'll ask uh, Schengen to give us uh, the final uh, words.